Deep in the wild mountains of southern China, researchers uncovered a startling phenomenon. Vast sinkholes, some deep enough to engulf entire towns. These weren't natural formations, but deliberate excavations, part of a clandestine operation unfolding across the rugged terrain. Trenches plunging over 100 meters hinted at a monumental engineering effort, yet their purpose remained shrouded in secrecy. No public statements explained these massive digs, igniting a wave of intrigue and speculation. What was China crafting in its hidden valleys? At the same time, an alarming trend surfaced. Southern rivers, vital to the nation's heartland, began and losing billions of tons of water. With 50,000 rivers crisscrossing China, this wasn't due to drought or evaporation. Satellite images captured streams dwindling to mere trickles in weeks, defying natural patterns. Rainfall held steady, and no extreme weather justified the loss. Hydrologists observed a peculiar detail. Water vanished in specific downstream zones, while upstream areas flowed normally. Subtle pressure shifts near fault lines, detected by groundwater sensors, suggested underground activity. Where was this water going? and why only in certain places? Speculation erupted across communities. Could this be the foundation for a hidden metropolis or a project of unprecedented scale? The absence of official clarity fueled wild theories, from secret military bases to extraterrestrial involvement. Locals puzzled over how such colossal pits appeared without visible machinery or workers. Thermal satellite scans showed no signs of nuclear activity, and seismic monitors detected no blasts typical of mining. The excavation seemed to emerge through an eerily quiet quiet, methodical process, unlike standard construction techniques. When authorities spoke, their answers were curt, referencing vague infrastructure initiatives without elaboration. Local media sidestepped the issue, despite the project's evident national significance. Researchers hit roadblocks, drone flights were reportedly prohibited, and geographic data access was tightly controlled, hindering efforts to confirm the pit's scale or intent. Sparse leaked documents mentioned high-capacity underground storage, but offered no clear purpose. The pits, isolated and lacking visible ties to water systems or industry, suggested a strategic, long-term vision cloaked in mystery. Geological surveys raised red flags. Seismographs picked up faint, rhythmic vibrations along fixed paths, distinct from tectonic or construction activity. Speculation pointed to pressurized water flowing through gigantic subsurface conduits, surpassing any known engineering feat. The government acknowledged water management efforts but dodged specifics. Unmarked security teams blocked roads to affected zones and drone footage of parched rivers or construction was swiftly scrubbed from Chinese platforms, with citizens urged to ignore the issue. A breakthrough came from a forgotten hard drive in a Wuhan office, revealing blueprints stamped by the Ministry of Water Resources. These outlined a sprawling underground network redefining hydroengineering. Tunnels 500 meters deep with 30-meter diameters could handle water speeds rivaling rapids, moving millions of cubic meters hourly to undisclosed endpoints. Geospatial experts linked the tunnel paths to seismic and anomalies under China's mountains, suggesting active excavation. The scale was staggering. Tunnel boring machines with 40-meter cutter heads, twice the size of any in use, required concrete volumes equivalent to 53 Three Gorges dams. No records confirmed such equipment acquisitions, and the system's military-grade automation, monitoring flow, and isotopic signatures hinted at a critical purpose. Officials dismissed the leaks as theoretical, but features like maintenance ports and emergency drains suggested an operational network. Questions loomed. Why move water matching the Yellow River's annual flow in 72 hours? Why the secrecy with tunnels near nuclear facilities and secure agricultural zones tied to rumored GMO crop trials needing vast irrigation? Coded references to Project Tianlong and subsystems like Orion Conduit or Pleiades Reservoir with clearance levels beyond top officials deepened the puzzle. Guard posts and unmarked helicopters patrolled suspected routes, citing geological survey zones to deter journalists. The South North Water Water Transfer Project, a $70 billion endeavor, redirects water from the lush south to the parched north. Spanning 1,400 kilometers, it channels 9 billion cubic meters yearly via tunnels and canals, supplying 70% of Beijing's water and irrigating fields. Mountain pits act as reservoirs for dry seasons, but the project displaced 300,000 people, dried wetlands, and slashed fish stocks. Southern farmers decry water theft, and engineers fight canal silt, with energy needs rivaling a small country's. 
Despite flaws, the project keeps northern taps flowing during droughts, refilling wells and sustaining crops. It's a daring answer to China's water woes, not a covert sci-fi scheme. Yet climate change threatens its viability, as shifting rainfall could dry southern sources. Plans for Tibetan glacier diversions signal China's defiance of natural limits. Globally, it prompts debate. As water grows scarce, who prioritizes its use? Cities, farms, or ecosystems? If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like, subscribe, hit the bell, and leave a comment for more exciting content. Thank you for watching.